All right, welcome back. And here's what we got. Very nice old Marantz integrated amp. Model 1030. Go in and take another look, a little closer look. It has a very simple problem, but unfortunately, um, after opening it up, I could tell that some uh, other work had been done and not done very well. So that's going to be priority one to get that fixed. And I'll, I'm going to reposition the camera and I'll take you in for a closer look at that um, all out butchery that was done to this uh, poor amplifier. So hang on for a second for that, please. All right, so coming in for a closer look in the interior view, and I'll show you what is going on with this uh, previous work. Let me get this. If you take a look right here, you can see that somebody jumpered in a transistor. They just clipped out the other one and jumpered that one in. They did the same thing right here. And then on the other side, they did it to a capacitor. And so I'm not saying there's never a case for that to be done. My criteria for doing that would be either A, very difficult access, or B, no access at all to uh, get behind the board to get the old component out. So the other thing that I found here that is really disturbing to me is if you look over here on this side, 2SC945, arguably the most common silicon transistor on the planet, or one of them. And that was replaced with an ECG85. Now, and this was done, I, I was told that this was done at a shop. So I'm not... Uh, got anything bad to say to any DIY person that doesn't have any knowledge or skill to repair these but if you have a shop and you don't have a 2SC945 either new or a circuit board you can pull one out of you need to give up and jumpering these in what really irritates me about this is that if you look here, there's a screw, screw here, screw down there, and a screw down there, and then a heat sink strap with a screw in it. You take those out, that circuit board will lean back enough to where you can have access to get back behind there. If you have a good technique and good tools, you should be able to get back there and get those transistors out the correct way. So. I think what we're going to do here is before, and the problem that this has is a very, very simple problem, and it was fixed. One side of this will get louder than the other side, and that's a very well documented problem with this. And it's this cap and this one that causes that problem. And as you can see, they jumpered in the one cap there. So we'll fix the problem after we fix the previous. Um, guys work so let me get the board out or loose from the heat sink we'll get it folded down and i'll see what we can do about getting the camera kind of set up maybe on my magnifier to where you can kind of see how i would go behind it and get those parts out of there correctly so let's do that and then once we have all that horribleness mopped up and we will be taking out that ECG 85 and putting in a 2SC 945 so once we have all that mopped up then we'll we'll, we'll get the cap out and uh, check that I'm sure it's probably bad and we'll actually fix it so we're gonna have to fix it before we can fix it so stand by all right that should give us a uh enough room. The first thing I'm going to do though is we're going to get that diode off that heat sink. And uh, I think I got a 
tool that might come in handy for that. And if you have one of these or one of Morant's series old receivers like this, and you have a problem with thermal runaway of the outputs, you might want to look into that diode right there that I'm taking off the heat sink. And it will check good. Uh-oh. It will check good. But uh, I had an issue with one, and it was um, 2270, maybe, 2370. And it was breaking down under load. And it would uh, just spontaneously ramp up the bias to the outputs. And it created a big problem. As you know, every time you check it, it checks fine. So, all right, now that we have this out of mortal danger, yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna be dealing with the bumpy camera because of the I've got it right on laying on top of my magnifier. So, okay, let me give my soldering iron a chance to heat up. So. Hold on for just a moment. All right, got my iron heated up and uh, you know, ready to go here. And what I did was just cut off just a little piece of solder wick that we can put on there. And then I get it, the pin ain't gonna come out easy. You're gonna have to take your time using the solder wick to pull up on the pin as I'm taking the solder off of it. And it's very possible that the one that they tagged on there will fall apart if I get it too hot. So now I get it. It's easy to tag one in. I also took the time to find a C945 while I was waiting for that to heat up. And I also don't have one that's brand new, but I've got multiple circuit boards with multiple C945s. So what I decided to do was I didn't take one out of an amplifier board. I took one out of a tape deck board. That way I know it hasn't had a ton of stress. And... Uh, there's my C945 that we're going to put in this guy. After I straighten the pins on. Like I say, I got nothing bad against anyone that's uh, supposedly not skilled like a DIY person that's doing this and you're just kind of using what you got and you know you don't know the ins and outs but for anyone that for anyone that supposedly has a shop and you would let something go out your door it looks like that oof Let's tag those leads up. And since you can't see real good about uh, from the angle that I'm at right now, once I pause the video, I'll flip the board around so I can see it. Make sure that we didn't solder bridge anything together. So. Let me check that. I'll get the other transistor out and then uh, we'll be back. All right, our second uh, recovered transistor is a 2SC 1318. And uh, it was nice that it wasn't a generic. And the one that actually goes there is the same, I believe. 2SC 1318. So, must have had that one. So, We'll get the uh, leads cut, 
get that put back in. And then we'll start over on the other side and get the cap out of that side. So stand by. Okay, we got the 2SC 1318 installed. And on that one, you have to make the, uh, the pins um, crisscross each other. So I put a piece of heat shrink tubing um, on the uh, collector to kind of isolate it away from the base pin. Pretty much what they did on the other side. And I noticed in my uh, process of putting that in that I put the 2SC945 in wrong. It's, uh, it's backwards. Um, the, emit, uh, the emitter and the base are uh, inverted. So I'll be cleaning up my own work and then we're gonna move over uh, we're gonna move over to this guy. Where is he at? Right there. Looks out of place there with all those old Elna caps. I believe those are old Elna caps or Panasonic caps, one of the two. So we'll get that out and uh, we'll put it in the correct way. So let me fix my mistake over here first. So stand by. All right, coming in from the back side, and we get a good look at the uh, solder um, side of the circuit board. And that's where we uh, put in the 2SC945 twice, and uh, right down below it. It's really tough to see it, but I oh, can't tell. I think those are the three points. That's right there. That's the transistor. It's hard to tell. I cleaned up the flux off of it and so it makes it really even harder to tell so but that's that's the idea you don't you don't want to be able to tell so um, jumping over to the other side and I didn't even look at the front of the board to try to like say well where's the cap at I'll just you know I, I could tell where the cap was put in and it might be really really hard to see it from here but you can tell that the connection got really really warm I mean really really warm so I believe that's the guy right there. You can just tell that that solder is kind of tacky, that he heated it up when he was trying to tag that, that cap in. So we're going to go ahead and just get that out real quick. And then we'll, uh, let me see. The last time I paid more attention to this than I did the unit. I wound up sticking a transistor in the, the wrong way, so maybe this isn't such a good idea. All right, let me uh, let me swap the cap out, and uh, then we're going to take out the cap from the other side and test that, because that's the one I suspect of being the problem, so stand by. All right. We got the customer cap mounted in correctly from the proper side of the circuit board not jumped in off of another one and all I did was just kind of mount back the ground strap just so I could make sure I was back to my original problem which is one side louder than the other and uh, this is the good side Let's see where the volume is at right there okay so now this is the side that is full bore as if there is no control. It would destroy that speaker if I let it go on. So again, I'm suspecting that it's that cap, the lower one of the two that are the same size right there. So let's go ahead and get that out. Let's ESR it and uh, see if uh, see if I'm right but I didn't come up with this fix this is just a, a very well documented problem um, at this stage of the game I don't really uh, pound my head too much um, the first thing I'll do is just uh, look it up on a couple of forums that specialize in these old Marantz's and see if the problem uh, happens to be listed and this one was so we're gonna go ahead and get that out and uh, we'll look at it and see so hang on all right, for checking uh, capacitors, I use the Independence Electronics ESR meter, um, also known as the Capacitor Wizard. 
Um, this guy's been around for probably 17, 18 years. I know that it was probably one of the first ones that came on the market for in-circuit uh, testing of capacitors. And at that time, knew it was a game changer and uh, had to have one. So what we're gonna do is this is the one that came out and uh, it, there's nothing there. I mean, it's not doing anything. And of course, this is a brand new cap and it pegs it. And if you find something that's, you know, in the compare section, um, you don't know if it's good or bad, you can just, you know, that's the reason they put compare it. You just grab yourself another cap and compare it and see. Um, but this thing is really useful tool to have, especially since so many things now have uh, switch mode power supplies in it, which are very capacitor dependent on uh, operating. A lot of people would say, well, why didn't you just recap this whole amplifier? Well, number one, it's not my amplifier. And number two, the customer is not paying me to recap it. He's paying me to fix the existing problem. And uh, the work that the uh, previous place had done on it that I corrected is included with the service for repairing the one channel that's uh, not working correctly. I'm sure there's tons of um, information on the internet about these, I've, or about this particular one. I've not looked it up other than just, um, you know, running it through a couple of forums as far as the particular problem that it has, but there may be tons of upgrades that you can do to this, modifications you can do to this. Um, that's not anything that uh, I have any interest in doing. If the customer was interested in that, I'm sure he would have brought that to my attention, but his uh, thought process is just to get the channel that's not working back up and going. So let me pause here. We'll get the, uh, get the cap changed out on the other side. Then we'll check it and see uh, if that's it. All right, coming back, taking a look at the board completely reinstalled back uh, to the heat sink. And, uh, Got the diode back in. Did not snap off a lead, which is a good thing because I'm sure that is not possible to obtain any longer. And taking a look at what we did there, there's our 2SC945. Um, tucked down below there is the uh, 2SC1318. Is that right? Over on the other side is the uh, cap that was tagged in and uh, there's our side with the cap we put in there so everything's uh, looking pretty good as far as the uh, circuit board is concerned and let's fire it up I know it works because I've already tried it so, so now the left side and then the right side is the exact same Very nice. So I think what we'll do now is put the uh, top and bottom panels on it and find us something uh, period correct for this, for the play test. Stand by. All right. This fine Marantz unit dates back to the 70s. So I would think this would be appropriate. You will not be hearing the title track. You will be hearing this track. All right, what you didn't see in the video, as I said, was the caps that we ESR'd to make sure the ones on the amplifier board were in pretty good health. 
The other thing I ran into was the uh, transformer was loose. I'm not sure how that happened. All right, hold on. Let's take let's take this in for a second. Right? Okay, the other thing that uh, needed to be done was the uh, feet on the bottom. Two of them had been changed to uh, not Morant's factory feet and they were too big to fit through the, to, to, to correctly fit through the holes in the bottom panel. So I had to modify those a little bit. But other than that, this was a pretty easy job. It was the last person that worked on it that uh, just didn't do a very, uh, very very clean, very good job, so I had to clean all that up. But otherwise, hope you guys have enjoyed the Model 1030 Vintage Marantz Integrated Amplifier. Thanks for watching this one, and uh, have something else coming up pretty soon.